The Lord be with you. As you can tell, we have someone else accompanying us this week, as we did last week, Karen Bowman, um, while Marilyn recovers from her surgery. I'm looking around for any scouts. It's supposed to be Scout Sunday, and we will have a litany only if they show up. <laughs> they usually show up at the 11 o'clock service, so that gives me more sermon time. Um, In the prayers, you're going to hear, for the prayers of sympathy, the name Harriet Smith. Uh, Harriet died on Friday morning early, and uh, our sympathy does go to Tom and the rest of the family. Our gospel text today is the Transfiguration, and it was a situation that caused the disciples to be terrified and to tremble. And our psalm talks about uh, the Lord being present. Let the people tremble. So we're going to talk about trembling and worship. Um, at least we're going to try to Put all that together. Let's prepare our hearts for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness found on the third page of your bulletin. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sins. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything that we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are cleansed. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All through the night, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh!
As he came down from the mountain with the ta two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Corinthians, third chapter. Since then, we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened, indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the old covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. 
We have renounced the same shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we command ourselves to, to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men. Moses and Elijah talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things that they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the children to come up. Good morning. Why don't you move a little closer? When I was in school, I don't know what class it was for. It was probably in Miss Vandenberg's class. Miss Vandenberg was my kindergarten teacher. We would sing a song when she came in the room and it went, I don't remember how the tune goes, but it went, good morning to you, good morning to you, we're all in our places with bright shining faces, good morning to you. Any of you sing that song? Well, we didn't sing it for very long because I can't remember it, and I usually remember those things. I can't remember the tune I'm saying. Uh, but just think, all the children, we would say we had bright, shining faces. What makes your face bright and shiny? A smile. There you go. A bright, shining face with a smile. Couldn't have been that we had clean faces because I don't imagine we always did. Well, Jesus' face in our gospel lesson today shone, really shined brightly. It was dazzling white, like a light bulb. Isn't that something? Yeah. I, it could have been a smile face, <laughs> but he at least, we, the disciples saw in him the glory of God. So much so that it says they were terrified, or at least the apostle Peter was, a bright, shining face. Well, that little song reminds me that Jesus had a bright, shining face showed the glory of God 
that day. Okay? How about we pray? Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the transfiguration where we see you in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats. But don't fall. I'm looking for my clicker and I can't find it. Might mean they took it away from me. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peter Bo Bowler once said to Charles Wesley, If I had a thousand tongues, I would praise Jesus Christ with every one of them. That inspired John Wesley to write that famous hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. And he wrote 28 verses. I've only seen one hymnal that had 18 of them printed. B.B. B. McKinney, one of the great writers in the Southern Baptist history, said, Anyone who can sing and doesn't sing, ought to go to Sing Sing. <laughs> he said, go to Sing Sing until that person learns to sing. Well, we could talk about the benefits of singing. Uh, did you know singing helps your breathing? Uh, singers live longer than the rest of the population on an average. But we're here at worship, and some can't sing, right? And that's fine. But we're going to talk about worship. And in particular, worship is supposed to have an effect on us. Some of us have had those experiences in worship that so align our hearts with Almighty God, that we keep coming back, oh, I need that, I need that, I need that. Blase, Bla, Bla, Blaise Pascal, the um, philosopher, said this. He was um, uh, picking up on something Augustine said when he said, we all have a God-shaped vacuum in our hearts. And if it's not filled by God, we try to fill it with everything else. And that's the purpose of worship. Now, if you notice in our text today, let's, oh, by the way, Dietrich Bonhoeffer lamented the fact that Christians have lost the sense of awe and the sense of fear in the presence of God. Now just think, Bonhoeffer wrote that back in the 1940s. Just think how much different it is today. Let's talk a little bit about the transfiguration. By the way, Luke, if you could turn the heat up, I think the air conditioning came on. And maybe, Rex, you could go to the other thermostat and turn that up also. Unless, of course, you would like the air conditioning on. <laughs> There's something in our hearts that draws us to God. 
It's natural. Now the disciples had an encounter with Jesus. And these biblical encounters seem to always be very dramatic. They had an encounter with Jesus. He brought them up onto the uh, mount we call Mount Transfiguration. They were tired and were trying to stay awake but falling asleep. And Jesus ra began to, his, his, his appearance began to take on a radiance, an astounding radiance. And there with him were Elijah and Moses. And they were talking about what was going to happen to him when he made his trip to Jerusalem, his death. In their encounter, the disciples, when Peter did finally shake away the sleep, he was terrified. Now it's an experience that is very much unlike most of what happens to us today. Uh, too much of what we do today is warm and sweet encounters with a loving Christ. But that isn't the real world. It's, um, C.S. Lewis said, you know, the meek and the mild Jesus who blesses everybody for whatever they do, regardless of how crappy and awful they are, that stuff is flabby religion. C.S. Lewis was against flabby religion. And we have this drive in each of us, an extreme human drive, a desire to encounter God. There's examples in Scripture. Moses encounters God in a burning bush. Jacob's ladder full of angels going up and down. Peter, after Jesus told him, and when Jesus was first calling him, and he told him to fish on the other side of the boat, and he caught fish, and he went, jumped in the water, and went running down at Jesus' feet and said, get away from me, for I am a sinful man. The Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, Damascus, took and uh, that was an encounter St struck blind by a blinding light Barbara Brown Taylor calls these encounters cracked doors between this world and some other brighter place where God is no absentee landlord in 1960 1960 was a hallmark year according to uh, experts. They say it seemed to be the pivotal point between, uh, for, for our country. From 1960 on, people became more and more prosperous. We can even say, even after going through, or even maybe being in the midst of the Great Recession, we're still more prosperous. We have things now that our grandparents would have never dreamed of. But since 1960, worship attendance has dropped. And they've also said, and many sociologists make a correlation between this, happiness in the United States has declined. Many sociologists make that correlation between worship attendance and happiness. There's something that happens to us with this encounter with the Almighty that changes us, helps put things in perspective. Actually, Dunham, I mentioned him last week, mega church um, pastor and the editor for many, many years of The Upper Room, and he talks about a young woman who started coming to his church who worship changed her. 
She worked in the country music business, and the upper room actually printed a number of her poems, actually put, printed a book of her poems. But he said, she was the best of the best, and her friends were all the highly popular, famous people. And she calls him up one day and says this, it's hell, this music world. Cocaine, alcohol, madness for money and success. It is hell. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I don't want to live like that. I don't want to live in this world like that. I'm being pulled into it. It's impossible to resist. I need your support. I need your prayers. I need God's people. She understood how that heart wants to be filled with all these other things when we don't fill it with Almighty God. There's a story of a um, prison down in South America. Because many of the prisoners were political prisoners, they did not want the prisoners to be educated. They did not want them to read and write. They'd have them stand up at attention in formation in the prison yard. And one day, standing in formation, one of the prisoners, a Christian, began to sing a Christian song. It was a song that the other prisoners knew, or many of them did, and they all started singing that song. Somebody passed down the row of prisoners a guitar, so the one that started singing was playing his guitar, singing that hymn. The guards ordered them to stop singing, and they wouldn't. What was the one thing that couldn't be taken away from them? worship. And they knew what it meant. They knew the power in worship. And they kept singing, so the guards took and hauled away the young Christian with his guitar. Of course, smashed his guitar, but smashed his hands. It horrified the other prisoners. And they put him back in his place, and he had to stand there. But now, without the guitar, he started singing again. And all the prisoners started singing. The guards were angered again. They hauled this prisoner away, beat him, broke his jaw so he could not sing put him back in line. But there he stood, and he just moved himself back and forth as if he were singing. And the other prisoners started moving themselves back and forth as if they were singing, and they began to sing that hymn again. The guards then took the young Christian man and killed him. Now, why would a person die over a song, a Christian song? He knew the power of worship in his life. Have you felt that power? We're about to enter Lent, Ash Wednesday. Here's your challenge. Attend worship regularly for those 45 days.
worship. It is a powerful thing. It is an encounter with the living, loving God. Amen. Together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father. Rejoicing with all the faithful, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy and transcendent God, through Christ, you have revealed your divine glory in our humanity. Awaken your church to see your presence manifested throughout the world, that we may serve you with a bold hope that acts with great boldness in your name. Lord, in your mercy. God of majesty, from the highest mountain to the lowest valley, your power is seen in your creation. Help us to protect and care for soil, air, water, and all the creatures you have made. Lord, in your mercy. God of hope and freedom, give just laws, fair leaders, sufficient food, water, and shelter. We pray, we pray for abundant peace to all nations in poverty, strife, or at war, especially Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, and other places in the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy. God of wholeness, we have come to this holy place to wait and to pray. Hear our intercessions on behalf of those whom we commend to you, especially 
Sarah Carroll and Harrison James, her baby. Marilyn Boston, Lyle and Lucy Dolly, Ron Fells, Christy Harrison, John Hilmy, Debbie Huff, Ellen Malcolm, Darlene McLaughlin, Willis Melgren, Angie Myers, Denise Newbold, Leon Parker, Vic Shelton, and Kylie Timmerberg. Are there any others? You have taken your own creation into the cloud of eternal life. May your eternal light shine upon those who have died and for whom we pray, especially Jean Strand, Harriet Smith, and Marie Robertson. Lord, in your mercy. God of new life, show us your will for the ministries in this place. And transform us for mission and witness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for, of your beloved for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, the Lord be he with you. up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it 
It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us in this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free, use your gifts to build one another up, and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Well, I, wanted, I do want to thank Karen. I do want to thank Katie for your great anthem. And I want to thank Angie, wherever she is. One of my favorite cantors. And David, thank you for standing there. I, as long as I'm thanking people. <laughs> By the way, David sang, I know that my Redeemer liveth from Handel's Messiah yesterday at... Gene Strand's funeral. David did an exceptional job for a piece that was written for a soprano. <laughs> I failed to see the humor in that. Uh, you may notice in this uh, thing here, whatever you call it, this buff messenger. colored whatever. It's the messenger, David. It oh, has been messenger. the messenger the, the for messenger. decades. Okay, fine, fine. It says garage sale, okay? I don't care about the garage sale, okay? But I'm involved with trying to get rid of the stuff we have. Call me if there's stuff at the Dollison house that you want to retain, else it shall be disposed of. My phone number's in there. Call me. Don't yell at me if it's gone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, David. Uh, Dan, Dan just asked me if we have a worship and music committee meeting. And Dan, I do not know. I usually rely on someone to send me a, an email. My turn. Okay. I am coming to you all today Life for Life um, Committee with the American Cancer Society. I'm on the board for the Stratford Relay this year. It's our 15th year. Messiah was part of the inaugural year, so we're bringing back our team. There's a sign-up sheet if you would like to be part of the team and walk, run, just cheer on other people. Um, we'll be forming a team, having some contests throughout the next couple months, and uh, than getting to walk and fight for the cure on June 3rd. So please check out the information over there or come and talk to me. Thank you. All right, also in the messenger is some news about the Lenten book. If you want one, there is a sign up sheet or at least a piece of paper that you can put your name on, on at the welcome table. Uh, Ten of them will be here on Ash Wednesday or before. So um, anyway, you can sign up for that. Also, Harriet Smith's funeral will be Friday at 1.30. Anything else? Oh, I, if you have to, go ahead. Remind everybody that um, it's been published, but next Sunday between services there will be a sign up, an opportunity for you to sign up 
with the committees that have been um, revived um, here at, at, at Messiah. So they were listed in the annual report. There was also, I believe, a brief description of each of the committees that we will be uh, restructuring. I would just encourage you to pray uh, this week about what those gifts are that you have to offer to any one of those committees. And we will have an opportunity then for you to learn more about the committees and sign up to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.